If you liked week three of college football, you are going to love week four. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you our week four college football predictions, our top five games of the week, and what is going to be by far the best weekend of college football we have had this season. Not only do we have three fantastic ranked versus ranked matchups after only having one in the previous three weeks, but we also are going to see the beginning of SEC football. The SEC is back. And we are also going to see the kickoff of Big 12 Conference play. What's not to love? What's not to get excited about? We have so many great matchups here. Let's go ahead and dive into our first one. And that is the 5th ranked Florida Gators traveling to take on the Lane Train and Ole Miss in Oxford. This game is special for many reasons. The first one is because Florida and Ole Miss don't play each other very often. Obviously a cross-divisional matchup, Florida in the East, Ole Miss in the West. They have not met each other since 2015, and somehow Florida has not traveled to Oxford since 2007. It's been 13 years since the Gators last visited the Rebels. So a lot of emotions going into this game. A very unique matchup. The debut of Lane Kiffin with the Rebels. And this is a game that many are pegging as a potential upset. Right off the bat, people think we could see a top five team lose in their first game. As many people have a lot of faith in Lane Kiffin down in Oxford. So a lot of questions going into this game. For me, the biggest one is if you want to say it's a sneaky upset game, that's fine. I agree with that. But why? Why is it a sneaky upset game? Well, the first one is because of the offense. We know Lane Kiffin is a brilliant offensive mind. Uh, we know that he's going to kind of come in here to Ole Miss and do things like he did at Alabama as offensive coordinator and like he was able to do at Florida Atlantic as head coach. But what is this offense going to look like? Rumor has it that Matt Corral is going to be the starting quarterback on Saturday, not John Rice Plumley, the dangerous dual-threat QB that was a nightmare for opposing defenses last year. Keep in mind, Plumley had 212 rushing yards against LSU in that 21-point loss last year for the Rebels. Corral completed 59% of his passes last year for a little over 1,300 yards and six touchdowns because the quarterback split so much time. So is the offense going to be clicking for the Rebels? Can Lane Kiffin, in a very short amount of time and limited practice time, have this offense ready to go with a starting quarterback that can actually throw the ball, and then Jerry and Ely as well, the dominant running back for the Rebels, a guy who was able to lead Ole Miss last year uh, with the ninth-ranked rushing offense in the country. So we know that when this Ole Miss offense is clicking, they are very difficult to stop. Uh, they finally have a coach that I think can have them clicking on all cylinders and clicking consistently. The thing is, they're running into a Florida team that has one of the best defenses in the country. Ole Miss had the ninth-ranked rushing offense in the country last year. Florida had the eighth-ranked rushing defense in the country last year. Not to mention that the Gators have a very dominant secondary that's going to be a nightmare for whoever is lining up under center for the Rebels. Florida also brings back arguably the best quarterback in the SEC in Kyle Trask, one of the best tight ends in the country in Kyle Pitts, relatively strong, at least experienced offensive line. And I do believe that the Gators and Dan Mullen come into Oxford and escape with a season opening victory, a game that will be close for the majority of the game, but expect Florida to pull away late behind the strength of their defense. Following that game, one that many think could be a potential trap game for Florida, we have another potential trap game for another top 10 team. As a lot of people think the 23rd ranked Kentucky Wildcats can go into the Plains, can go into Jordan-Hare Stadium, and take down the 8th ranked Auburn Tigers. I can see it. I don't see it right now. I have Auburn winning the game, but I'm not going to be surprised in the least if Mark Stoops and the Wildcats storm into the Plains and take down Gus Malzahn and his Tigers. And here's why. Kentucky finally has a quarterback. Last year, they were supposed to have Terry Wilson, the guy who led Kentucky to a 10-win season in 2018. 
But when Wilson and all the other capable quarterbacks went down early in the season, they relied on Lynn Bowden, a wide receiver, to play quarterback for them. And oddly enough, it worked. Bowden led the Wildcats to a 6-2 record during his time as starter, including a bowl victory over Virginia Tech. Bowden, unfortunately, has departed. He could do everything. He could throw. He could run. He could catch. He was great on special teams. So that's a huge loss for this Kentucky team. But Wilson is back at quarterback. He's experienced. The only question for me is how rusty is, going, is he going to be uh, in what's nearly been a year since he last played football after that devastating injury that he suffered in 2019. So how rusty is Terry Wilson going to be? And how much can Asim Rose and Cavassier Smoke take off for Wilson? How much of pressure can they take off of Wilson on that ground game? Because here's the thing. Kentucky has one of the best offensive lines, not just in the SEC, but in the entire nation. So a very strong offensive line, two capable running backs, and a capable quarterback could pose problems for an Auburn defense that did lose quite a bit from last year's squad. Now, on the other hand, you have Auburn, who's led by a second-year quarterback in Bo Nix, a guy who played relatively well as a true freshman last year under Gus Malzahn. Nix returns his top three wide receivers. The kicker for Auburn, though, is they lose their entire offensive line. So a lot of inexperience, not that much depth, not that much experience up front for the Tigers. And you wonder, with a Kentucky team that was 21st in the country last year in total defense, will that be an issue for Auburn? Will it be an issue for Auburn, who's also not just dealing with a new offensive line, but they're also dealing with a new offensive coordinator and former head coach at Arkansas, Chad Morris. So how well will Auburn's offense be clicking in this game? Will the offensive line be an issue? And if it is, can Bo Nix make some plays, whether on his feet or getting the ball away quickly for Auburn to win this game at home? I do believe that they're able to do just that. I think Chad Morris is a brilliant offensive mind. I think Chad Morris is perfect as a coordinator. He just was not cut out to be a head coach. And I think that Gus Malzahn and the Tigers get a little creative in this game. And what I think is going to be a relatively low-scoring game, it's Auburn that escapes with a narrow victory over Kentucky, a team that will be back in the top 25 very, very soon. Following that game, we have the 24th-ranked Louisville Cardinals traveling to take on the 21st-ranked Pittsburgh Panthers. These two teams, like Florida and Ole Miss, somehow have not met since 2015. And back then, that was a 45-34 victory for the Panthers. If there's one thing that I can guarantee is that Pittsburgh is not going to drop 45 points in this game, despite how poorly Louisville's defense played last week in their 13-point loss against Miami. This is a game that is going to be very interesting in terms of the clash of style, uh, in terms of the clash of strengths. Obviously, Louisville's strength is their offense. The offense is the key for the Cardinals. Uh, you got Mikhail Cunningham. You got JV on Hawkins, who rushed for 164 yards last week against Miami. You got 2 2 Atwell. Uh, and you got an offensive line that is struggling a little bit, struggled against that Miami defensive line. So, a strong Louisville offense going up against one of the best defenses in the country in Pittsburgh, especially up front along that defensive line. The Panthers had seven sacks last week against Syracuse, have allowed an average of five points per game in just two games, but still. Five points per game on average in their two games this season, and have allowed an average of 50 or 26 rushing yards per game this season. Only 52 total rushing yards allowed in two games. So this Pittsburgh defense, guys, I think is going to give Louisville a lot of fits here, especially with the game being on the road for the Cardinals. Pittsburgh, they're high on themselves. Uh, they're 2 0. Louisville might be a little down on their luck following a disappointing loss at home to Miami. A very lackluster performance where the offense struggled mightily uh, until midway through that third quarter, and the defense had no answer for Derek King and the Hurricanes. Pittsburgh and Kenny Pickett, they're no Miami. They're no Derek King and that type of Miami offense. They don't have Rhett Lashley running their offense. But I do think that Pickett makes just enough plays in this game to exploit some weaknesses in Louisville's defense. And it's the Panthers that improved to 3-0 and and will be a top-20 team going into Week 5. Louisville will drop out of the rankings, but like Kentucky, will find themselves back in the top 25 very, very soon. Following Louisville-Pittsburgh, we've got an interesting matchup here. Now, this is a game that under normal circumstances, uh, maybe if there was no COVID, 
we might not be talking about this game, at least not in deeper detail. But it's the 22nd ranked Army Black Knights traveling to take on the 14th ranked Cincinnati Bearcats. Again, why is this game up here? Why should this game uh, be intriguing to you other than it just being a top 25 matchup? Well, because you're going to see yet another interesting clash in styles here between Army's dangerous triple option that has seen them outscore their two opponents 79 to 7. Black Knights 2 and 0 have outscored their opponents 79 to 7. And then you've got Cincinnati, who has one of the best defenses in the American Athletic Conference, and they have one of the most experienced defenses in the entire country. So can Cincinnati at home shut down such a difficult offense to stop? in that triple option at Army. The Black Knights have rushed for 776 yards in their two games. A win against Middle Tennessee and a win against Louisiana Monroe. Christian Anderson doing a fantastic job for them. He is the leader of this Black Knights team right now, the leading rusher for this team as well. So will he be able to come into this game and make enough plays against a very stout Cincinnati defense? And before you say what I know you're going to say, Cincinnati did allow 20 points, 20 points to Austin P in their season opener. Keep in mind that 14 of those 20 points were garbage time touchdowns where the Bearcats were already leading by 42 points. So I don't put too much stock into the amount of points that Cincinnati allowed last week against the Governors. What I do put a lot of stock in is what I saw out of Desmond Ritter. Not only did their defense play well, but their quarterback, who was shaky at times last year, was poised in the pocket, was making fantastic decisions, was very great on the ground as well. And I think Desmond Ritter comes into this game and against Army, Army now facing their toughest opponent they've seen this season, I think has a fantastic showing. Army has held to under 21 points in this game. And it's Cincinnati and Luke Fickle that get a huge, huge win, bumping them to 2-0. and and then finally, Florida State at number 12, Miami. Why is this game up there? For a lot of reasons. College game day will be in Miami for this game. It is a historic rivalry game between the Seminoles and the Hurricanes, one of the best rivalries in all of college football. Uh, so obviously a few great reasons there. The third is we're anxious to see Miami back in action, especially after what we saw them do against Louisville just last weekend. So a lot of major storylines going to this game. Can Miami keep up the success they had against the Cardinals? Defeating a very good offensive team, like we mentioned, uh, beating them by 13 points at their house. Secondly, Florida State will be without their head coach, Mike Norvell, who just last weekend tested positive for coronavirus. And all I'm going to say about that is, first, we do wish him a very safe and speedy recovery. Take it from a guy who has had coronavirus, uh, it is not a joke. It is nothing uh, that you want to deal with. And I uh, still thoughts and prayers certainly up to Norvell and every other player and coach across the country that has had to deal with that. But it is a good thing that Mike Norvell will not be coaching in this game because if he were, his record at Florida State would drop to 0-2 because there is no doubt in my mind that Miami is going to win this game. Miami has won three straight in the series against the Seminoles. That includes a 27-10 victory last year. The game that ultimately got rid of Willie Taggart in Tallahassee. Florida State, they started strong a few weeks ago against Georgia Tech. They were up 10 to nothing. And then the second half hit. Two costly fumbles. The defense didn't know how to tackle. The wide receivers didn't know how to catch. It was an epic collapse that saw Georgia Tech score outscore them 16 to 3 and win the game 16 to 13. Miami, on the other hand, they just beat Louisville. Derrick King had 325 passing yards and three touchdowns. He really didn't do anything on the ground. That shows you how dangerous this guy can be. He doesn't have to do both. He can pick and choose how he wants to win the game. He won the game against UAB on the ground. He won the game against Louisville through the air. I think he does it both ways here against the Seminoles. My thing is, if Jeff Sims of Georgia Tech can put up 341 yards of offense against Florida State, imagine what Derrick King can do against the Seminoles. They impressed me last week. Florida State has failed to impress me. I know it's only been one game. I know they're coming off a week of rest. But I like this Miami team a lot. They proved a lot to me last week against Louisville. Many will credit the offense for that. Many will criticize their defense. The defense is only going to get better with time. And I guarantee you the defense is going to flex their muscles on Saturday night. 
Miami wins this game comfortably against their in-state rival. And depending on how the AP poll ranks the incoming Big Ten teams, the Hurricanes could be a top 10 team going in to Week 5. So guys, there you have it. It's a big week for college football. It's the week we've all been waiting for. The SEC, arguably the best conference in college football, is back in action. We're seeing conference games in the SEC, the Big 12, and the ACC, and countless other Group of Five conferences as well. College football is back. It's in full force. We've got five great games, plenty of other honorable mentions. It's a full Saturday slate. You do not want to miss it. And, of course, we will have Game of the Week analysis on two of these games coming out one tomorrow and one on Friday. So certainly do not miss that and do not miss what is going to be a fantastic college football Saturday. So, guys, thank you so much for watching us here at The Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And check out everything down in that description below. We've got exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com. You can sign up for our newsletter, you can sign up for our expert picks, and you can sign up on our Patreon account to get exclusive college football content that will not be found anywhere else. Not on YouTube, not on our website, only on Patreon. The links for all those things down in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Yeah.